Hello and welcome to Mobility Challenge, where engineers respond to audience questions to win valuable prizes. I'm your handsome host, Paul Rosa, and today we are in South Central China in the fair city of Gongping, where a brilliant team of engineers developed a transportation system that moves the world. We have randomly selected two of these engineers. Let's meet them now. Rebecca Oleski, come on down. Thanks for picking me. I'm so excited. So tell us about yourself, where you live and what you like to do. Well, I live in the residential district, and I love to travel to the Lunar Resort on the Space Force daily flights to the moon. I understand you are a civil engineer that works on accessibility. How did you first become interested in engineering? When I was younger, I was involved in an international program called Future City. That's when I decided to become an engineer. Yes, I've heard of that program. It's intense. Oh, yeah. And our second engineer is an electrical engineer who works on sustainability. Justin Judd, come on down. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, Justin. So tell us about yourself. Well, I love to kayak in the Lee River and live over here in the historic district. I understand that Gongping's transportation system was developed because of issues in nearby Gailin. Yes, a population explosion in Gailin in the early 2100s caused traffic gridlock because infrastructure couldn't keep up with growth. There was so much smog, it was hard to see and breathe. <coughs> To prevent issues like those in Gailin, a team of engineers from Gongping got together to develop FAIR. FAIR is flexible, accessible, integrated, and renewable. It's a total solution for transportation pollution. From east to west, FAIR is best. Ah yes, with that said, let's play Mobility Challenge China Edition. Sound fair? Fair and square. All right, here's how it works. I'll read a question. If you would like to respond, ring in. For each question, you get a point. When we're out of time, the one of the most points wins. And today's prize is a two-year personal pod lease joined by the Ford Motor Company. I hope I win, because I love to win. Well, we'll find out, Justin. Question one is from Mrs. Lee. She asked, how does fair help people move from one type of transportation to the other? Justin. That one's mine. Fair is flexible. It links personal, mass, and cargo transit at sub hubs. The red, green, and blue lines go through the main sub-hub, which is called Grand Central Transit. And as you can see here, personal vehicles, called Gong Ping Pods, are used along roadways. They can click into and out of elevated mass transit to reduce traffic. And shown here are underground cargo tubes that move goods throughout the city. Very nice, Justin. One point for you. All right. Question two is from Mr. Chen. He wonders how fare helps older folks like him get around. Rebecca. That's my specialty. Fair is accessible. No physical or economic barriers. If fair wasn't accessible to everyone, it wouldn't be, well, fair. <laughs> That's a good one. Thanks. So, Gong Ping Pods can park alongside buildings using terrace option parking, or top. You can enter your building straight from your vehicle. Now that's accessibility. There are pod options for residents of all income levels as well. You can have your own, or just pick one up at a nearby sub-hub. Nice job, Rebecca. One point for you. All right. Question three is from Mr. Wu. He wonders if fair, he wonders how fair links the various districts in Gongping. <laughs> Rebecca. I'll take that one. Fair is integrated. All districts are interconnected. It's an intermodality feature of fair. Intermodality? Please explain. Sure. Here, you can see the main lines of the fare system, the Lee River, and Grand Central Transit. The red line connects the residential district, where I live, to the industrial district, where I work. The blue line connects the historic district, where Justin lives, to the agricultural zone. And the green line connects our amazing downtown with the university district. Very nice and colorful. Another point for you, Rebecca. All right. Now here's one from Mr. Ng. He wonders if FAIR is powered by a clean, sustainable energy. Justin. That one's mine. FAIR is renewable. A roadway is generating enough energy to power personal, mass, and cargo transit. Solar, piezo, and thermal energy are harvested by our quad-P smart roads. Quad-P smart roads? Yes, photovoltaic piezo pad pavement. All of this solar, piezo, and thermal energy stored in graphene supercapacitors located at sub-hubs. And it's also a closed-loop energy system called TIPS, which stands for Thermal Induction Piezo and Solar. And as pods travel over the roadways, continuous induction charging keeps them powered. Continuous induction charging. Please explain. Here, hold this. 
It's kind of like thousands of those old-fashioned toothless chargers embedded just below the roadway surface. <coughs> oh, sorry. Cool, but is it safe to walk across? No worries. Continuous induction charging only works when coupled with matching coils in the vehicle. Very nice, Justin. Another point for you. Yes. All right. Now here's one from Mr. Yang. He wonders if he wants to know about Gong Ping's other industry. <laughs> Rebecca. I'll take that one. Gong Ping has a diverse economy. There are jobs in sustainable energy harvesting from bladeless wind lenses and space-based solar systems. Agriculture is also a big industry. Rice and tropical produce are grown on our terrace karsts. Of course, Gong Ping is a great tourist destination. There's a centrifugal propulsion spaceport, the world's fair Ferris wheel, the sky tram to the high temple, and our amazing karst landscapes. No more mining limestone from karst like in the 20th century. That's for sure. All right, question six from Dr. Zhang. He asks, what is unique about Gongping's education and medical systems? Justin. That one's mine. The Life Watch offers real-time holographic communication. Life Watch? Here, have one. It's a virtual learning interface that adapts to help students learn. And it's also a wellness link to doctors for remote health monitoring through the IntelliGrid. Great job, Justin. Ooh, will you look at that? That's my life watch telling us that time's up. And it looks like we have a 3-3 tie. So congratulations, you split the prize. You each get a one-year lease. Oh, man, I really wanted to win. Well, Justin, life isn't always fair, but your transportation system sure is. And as the famous Dr. Seuss wrote long ago, from there to here and here to there, fair transport is everywhere. Fair transport to move your world. That's it for today. Join us next week for another edition of Mobility Challenge. Uh, with all that mass transit, what do you need individual cars for? Um, well, we use individual cars because most people, you know, it's like it's kind of a status thing. They want to have a car. It's kind of like their pride. So they want to be, and they also want to be able to have a personal mobility themselves. <laughs> So we have personal vehicles because, as you can see with our mass transit, it doesn't go everywhere because if it did, we wouldn't have any room for buildings. So we decided to have personal vehicles that could click into and out of the elevated mass transit because if they can click into and out of the elevated mass transit, it incorporates a personal vehicle system with the mass transit as well. And in all reality, nowadays and in the future, you don't have to own one. And in our city, you can pick one up at nearby sub hubs, which are located in numerous places throughout the city. They're already actually doing this, I think, in DC. They're called zip cars, and they have them, and you're able to pick them up with your credit card. And they have a tracker, so they know how far you've gone. They also do this with the bikes. When you put, put them back at any area, they can charge you for the certain amount you've used them. About how you move raw materials in and how you move waste out of your city. Wait, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. How do you move raw materials into the city and take waste out? Um, well, we have um, our cargo tubes which go to other cities such as Gailin and surrounding other cities in China. And so we're able to bring our larger materials in through the larger um, um, underground cargo tubes that are bigger between the cities, so we're able to bring large raw materials in. We also, for our waste, we have our algae digesters, which is where we send all our waste, and it's composted there, and some of it is turned into um, hydrogen for energy. And most of our materials in our city, uh, they're recycled, so most times they don't actually have to go into the algae digester. They can go to the recycling plant, which is just outside the city, and then they can be recycled there. And to move the actual move, like waste from the home to the algae digester, we also use our cargo tubes because that's where our power, water, sewage, and any waste flow through because it eliminates the need to dig you know, a new hole underneath the ground. What are some of the greatest challenges that the engineers of your city are continuing to work on to improve? Um, well, a really big challenge is just making the fare system grow to other cities so we're able to use it even more. Just not even around the surrounding, but other countries. Our engineers have to figure out, they, we have a special team that goes out to other countries and other cities that are in need that want us to come. And we, our engineers will figure out 
how this system will fit into their city, and if they don't have the, enough money to pay for it, we'll put it in a, the worst area, and then they'll create energy and their traffic will go down that area, and they'll get money from that, so that we'll be able to put it in other areas. Another thing is that we wanted to continue to make our city accessible for everybody because a transportation solution isn't a solution if it doesn't work for everybody. So that's really something that we're considering to making things more accessible throughout our city for everybody. We're also looking at our energy storage, which is the graphene supercapacitors, which are located throughout the city. And we want to look at them because we want to be able to make them more and more efficient because as, if, as they continue to progress, we can store even more energy in a smaller area. And if we can do that, our vehicles will become lighter and more efficient than they even are now. And when we were learning about batteries, we went to the GM Tech Center, where they actually research the Volt and they create the new ones. And so they taught us a lot about batteries, how you need surface area to collect the energy so you can't have this a solid block. That's where we use the nanotubes. When you thought about your transportation system design, can you give an example of something that you considered but decided not to go with, and why? Um, well, we thought of doing underground like subways, but w since we had the cargo tubes underground, we didn't want to have too much underneath because there could be like it could collapse something or just we didn't have enough, it, it was more, it was almost too much money, but since this creates enough revenue and it's not harmful since we're using electricity and not, okay. Well, the main reason we chose this type of transportation system and with a continuous induction charging is because our engineer mentor, Dr. Linda Gerhart, she has a Chevrolet Volt and she loves it, but she wishes that there would be more charging stations because where we live, there's only two in the known area. So, she wishes that there would be more, so we decided to come up with an idea that continuously charges your car to where you don't have to go to a charging station. You can be driving and it's charging, or you can be parked and it's charging your car up all the time. 